Hey, what's going on? This is the Body Punch Podcast, and my name is Naz. Let's talk about UFC 278. What an amazing ending to UFC 278. Leon Edwards with the head kick KO win against the pound for pound greatest fighter of all time right now. Kamaru Usman in Salt Salt Lake City. What an amazing win in the fifth round to get a head kick knockout just like that. In everybody's opinion, including myself, losing all of the other rounds, maybe winning the first or uh, the second, but decisively losing that fight. And for him to come back and to get that win against one of the scariest fighters and the scariest fighter at 170 pounds, Kamaru Usman, getting that head kick against the undefeated fighter in the UFC, Kamaru Usman. Spectacular win. Spectacular win for everybody in the UK as well, especially Birmingham getting the championship belt And, oh, my God, the door has just opened for little Leon Edwards, as he refers to himself, just sneaking his way through. Well-deserved title fight, well-deserved win. A lot of people online were mentioning how this could have been a lucky kick, but you could see it with the, the corner work that was done by the Leon Edwards camp, getting him to, you know, rile back up after facing adversary in the first four rounds. Leon Edwards came back to to really, he bucked himself up. He, he got himself up. He looked like he was out of it for a, a little bit of that fight. It looked like uh, the cardio issues were, really playing his toll, uh, really playing a toll on his body. He looked super tired in that fight, but, you know, something just happened in that fifth round where Leon Edwards was trying to put some combinations together against, again, the pound-for-pound greatest fighter at the time. And Kamaru Usman was lapping people, you know, lapping Masvidal lapping Coven Covington and taking on all fighters. This is the second fight that these two gentlemen have had together. And for Kamaru Usman to lose to Leon Edwards, man, I mean, the next thing that they have to do with these two gentlemen is to have a rematch. Now, a lot of people are throwing out the idea, jokingly, Dana White is throwing out the idea that it should be in Wembley Stadium one of the biggest stadiums in the UK. It's an open-air stadium, which the UFC has usually stayed away from. I believe one time they had had it in Abu Dhabi with Anderson Silva. And the UFC has a lot of issues and concerns about, you know, the weather in the UK. And could they actually have it in an open-air stadium? But who knows? We all know for a fact that, especially if you put Leon Edwards at the top of the food, uh, at the top of the food chain on on that card, if you put him as the main event, for sure, there's a 100% chance that the whole stadium could be sold out. Now, let's see what happens. Kamaru Usman has also chatted to a couple of media members, including TMZ, and they mention that uh and he mentioned that he would really like to go to england he would like to go to the uk he would like to fight leon edwards in his hometown in his home country with his home crowd man what a sight that would be for kamaru usman to either retain the belt or for leon edwards to keep or you know for kamaru usman to win back his belt and for leon edwards to retain his belt the the way that the fans have reacted and the way that I reacted when watching this fight was in awe and amazement. 
it was like you were seeing something that was just not possible. You were seeing something that just didn't compute in our minds. For Leon Edward to knock out Kamara Usman in the fifth round and to see that image of Kamara Usman on the ground was, it was just very interesting to see because it never crossed our minds. It never crossed my mind, especially, that seeing the the fights that Leon Edwards has had before, for him to head kick, knock out the, you know, Kamaru Usman, whose striking ability has gotten better and better over time and not getting knocked out by Masvidal, not getting taken out by Kobe Covington, Kobe Covington, Gilbert Burns couldn't even do it. But Leon Edwards was able to to get the finish against Kamaru Usman. I mean, what what a spectacular fight. What amazing co- corner work by Leon Edwards. I mean, they've done all the training before. They have rehearsed this fight in their minds hundreds of times. At that point, the only thing that Leon Edwards' camp can do is wake Leon up, wake him up, and get him to just do the game plan. Get him to just, you know, really, you know, just get back into the groove of things. It just looked like at one point he was lost. And for his corner to wake him up, which they did. It, it wasn't just yelling out of nowhere. Uh, Leon Edwards' crew really woke him up in that fifth round and got him to throw that combination with uh, the left jab. And then the the high kick for the KO. The the corner had a lot to do with that, with that fight and with that win. What an what a, what just guts and determination Leon Edwards had for him to be losing all of those rounds for the commentators, for the people in the crowd, for people watching at home to just, you know. I'll be honest with you. I thought it was a foregone conclusion that Leon Edwards was going to lose that fight. Um, watching all of those rounds. Now, at the beginning of the fight, I thought, you know, Leon Edwards might have more of a chance than most people are are thinking and saying uh, in the media. But seeing all those fights, or seeing all those rounds go by and... At the beginning of the fight, Leon Edwards was doing some great work. Uh, he got the back of Kamar Usman. Uh, the only loss that Kamar Usman's had is to a rear naked choke, and he was, uh, you know, trying to really get into that position. But you know, it, Leon looked pretty good at the beginning of the fight, but later on, it, it looked like uh, Kamar Usman was just doing what Kamar Usman does best: get you against the cage, uh, wear on you. Uh, hit you with combinations and then go straight for the takedown is vintage Kamar Usman and Leon Edwards just um, he really he dug his heels into the ground and 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 uh, and did the spectacular Um, it's so funny that a guy that was really you know not known for putting on these amazing fights is being talked in, uh, about in this regard. Uh, let's talk about the co-main event real quick. Paulo Costa defeats uh, Luke Rockhold. Uh, unanimous, unanimous decision win for Paulo Costa, uh, the eraser, um, to get against the retiring Luke Rockhold. Uh, I talked about this at uh, in the pre-fight podcast, but this might this is the end of an era. The only one that's part of this era that's kind of left is, you know, maybe like Wonder Boy, but they never, they never, he never fought in that division. Um, and Chris Weidman, Chris Weidman uh, still looks like he wants to fight. I mean, after having a broken leg like that in his advanced age, uh, it might be almost, it, it might be a wrap for him as well, but it is truly an end of an era, especially the AK era. Where, you know, Habib has retired, DC is retired, 
Velasquez has retired, and now Luke Rockhold putting on, I believe, an amazing fight, a hell of a fight, where both of these gentlemen were throwing leather like crazy. And yes, they did get tired, but I think that it was an amazing fight and it deserves a rewatch by everybody listening to this podcast. And, uh, you know, it, it, it deserves a rewatch by everybody because of the heart and determination that both of these guys, you know, it, it, at one point it looked like Luke Rockhold was legitimately going to get knocked out like bad by Paulo Costa. You know, Luke was putting his hands on his knees and it, it looked like he was extremely tired um, due to the elevation or due to any number of factors. Who knows? But I I really do believe that the elevation had a big um, factor in this fight. Uh, fighters like Kamaru Usman didn't show much fatigue um, opposed to fighters that didn't like uh, Luke Rockhold who does train at a cave and, and also spends a lot of his time in, in California with, um, you know, Chito Vera and, and the crew down there uh, with Perillo. And I believe, you know, that's not really at elevation. This is, this is true elevation over here uh, in Utah. Um, and especially like, you know, where, like I said, Kamara Usman trains in Denver most of the time now. Um, with the elevation. So I do believe elevation had something to do with this. I, I, it was just, it was tough to watch, uh, in, in that sense. But on top of that, you know, Luke, Luke Rockhold at the age of 37 years old for throwing those, you know, crazy punches back, not like conceding to Paulo Costa, not just giving up in the fight, for him to, yes, I guess he, he did walk away. He did put his hands on his knees and all that kind of stuff. But for him to still catch him with a couple of great shots, he, he got that in, in the later rounds. They were extremely tired. And, I mean, at one point at the end of the fight, uh, the last sequence of the whole fight, uh, Paulo Costa got uh, Luke Rocco to the ground. And you thought that, oh, okay, I mean, it's a – it's a, you know, it's already a done, it's already done and it's already going to go to Paulo Costa. But now Luke Rockhold reverses the position, gets full mount, and starts rubbing his face full of blood onto uh, Paulo Costa. And I mean, it just, what a fitting end to the career of Luke Rockhold. I mean, this is a guy that everybody had such high hopes for. He achieved what he needed to achieve in strike force and and got the belt in the UFC. But, you know, due to injuries, due to the the horrible staff infection that he had, um he wasn't able to really, you know, he only got one defense and that was against Michael Bisping and Michael Bisping took the belt. You know, he didn't even get a defense. He, he only got that one fight. So it, it's just a what what a great what if story. You know, could Luke Rockhold be put down as one of the greatest of all time if he didn't have all of those injuries? Um, well, you know, you think about it and you get really emotional thinking about, you know, Luke Rockhold, this is his last fight and what a great post fight interview Joe Rogan did with Luke Rockhold. Uh showed the emotion, showed the love that Luke Rockhold had has for this game, for this MMA game, and especially with the UFC, especially with some of the comments that he was making uh about the UFC. And for him to to give a shout out the way that he did to the UFC. Uh it really looked like it meant a lot to Dana White in the post-fight press conference. Um, I think it was a great fight. I think, yeah, obviously it was uh, pe- both of them were getting really tired. But at the end of the day, it was, a you know, you watch this fighting stuff, not for just like spectacular. Every single fighter brings something different to the game, right? 
like uh, Israel Adesanya has a different taste and style that he brings to this game. Luke Rockhold, when he fought in this fight, you know, you're you're just watching something else. You, yes, you're going for lunch, but you just ordered something else for lunch. This is, you know, every fight is different. Every fight brings something else to the table. And I really do believe that this was a, the, uh, a great fight. Now, the last one that I'm going to talk about on this uh, card, Marab Nawalashvili faces off against Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo gets defeated. Uh, Marab wins this fight quickly. I'm just going to go over this. It seemed like Dana White was not happy with this fight um, and the way that it played out. Uh, Rob was really just, you know, taking Aldo against the ca- a cage and and uh, really going after him at that point. And then in some sequences, he wasn't really doing much. It's a tough position to be put into. And then also Dana White didn't like the fact that, you know, even after the the fight, it seemed like uh, Dewalashvili did not want to fight his friend and training partner for the belt. I mean, you know, it, it's a tough situation to be in, right? Like, you know, you, you see one of your really close friends who has the belt. Are you going to risk that friendship for the UFC title? And that's really up to them. There's no comment that we can make uh, about that. But, you know, tough fight, tough situation to be in. It, it, you know, Jose Aldo really made a great account of his, himself at some point. And, um, yeah, there isn't much that you, you can say aside from, you know, you, you know that the Wallace Feely is an exciting fighter. Um, I hope the UFC and Dana White especially doesn't, uh, don't get too mad at him for too long. But we, we know how exciting of a fighter is. The cardio, the, the pace that he puts on people is destructive and, and it takes down people. And um, it makes him really worried. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the Wallace Feely seemed like he's saying that this is Jose Aldo's last fight. Uh, something that he mentioned after the fight. Uh, so let's see if this is Jose Aldo, the great king of Brazil. Let's see if this is his last fight. It'd be a shame if it was but understandable as well. I mean, he's at 135 pounds. He's tried his best at 145. Now he's, you know, he just finished, um, in his opinion, he just got off the run for the 135 pound belt. But what a great card. What a great win by all of these fighters, especially Leon Rocky Edwards. Some of the stuff that's coming out of this fight, you know, with, um, the Rocky music being played and his coaches are yelling at him. What a fantastic way of getting motivated and, and uh, what a great win. So emotional for everybody on Leon Rocky Edwards team and so great for everybody in, in the UK and what, what a boom uh, in the UK mixed martial arts realm. What a great, uh, what a great fight. What a great card. Thank you for listening to this podcast. My name is Naz. This has been the Body Punch Podcast. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, all that good stuff. Um, And also, if you're listening to this podcast on the different podcast platforms, please give it five stars. Leave comments there as well. It really helps. Again, thank you for listening. This has been the Body Punch Podcast. My name is Naz.